so selling IIoT and digital transformation A to Z, take zero. All right, so this is, a, uh, this is an answer to a question that came up uh, this past week about, hey Walker, can you explain how it is uh, IntelliC integration and 4.0 solutions go to market? So that is, how do you sell IIoT and digital transformation from beginning to end? So how do you over, how is it you, you know, from the, from the introduction to the client to executing the vision, how do you guys actually do that? And so I, that's what this video is about. It's going to be a little long. It's going to be a little longer video. Probably take me 15 minutes to get through everything. But uh, th this question has come up a couple of different times. So this is an addendum to what we're shooting this week. All right. So selling IIoT and digital transformation A to Z. Okay. So we basically end up with uh, one or two two different types of opportunities. We have an inbound opportunity and we have an outbound opportunity. Okay, so this is uh, inbound means that the customer, the client came to us. This stuff's important, okay? Where they come from is critical. So the inbound opportunity means the client came to us. Nearly vast majority of the, the clients who reach out to us, it's primarily word of mouth. A lot of it comes through our existing clients, so, uh, or it comes from our vendors. Um, what IntelliC integration is really known for, what our organization is really known for, is essentially snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. So uh, what uh, our vendors um, will recommend us for the most difficult um, projects, the largest enterprise solutions, and generally ones, though these are generally projects where someone else has already failed. That, and 99% and of the projects that we get involved in are us coming behind someone else and it's at, it's at a vendor's request, okay? Um, so uh, that opportunity is what we refer to as a warm or hot opportunity, okay? So what does that mean? It means that we don't have to sell value propositions to that opportunity. We're not, we're not, selling the value proposition of digital transformation of IAOT or of enterprise class MES systems. They are, they're already fully aware of those values. Their problem is they can't find someone to be able to implement and deploy. I'm gonna talk about implementation and deploy. A lot of the previous videos that we've already shot are showing you the methodologies that we use to be successful. That is the way that we approach the project, whether that's agile project management using the software development lifecycle, um, the tools that we use, like Fabricator and Smartsheets, um, the, the, the development methodology that we employ, that is the unified namespace, and the fact that, that, consumers, uh, that consumers and producers of data are all consuming and producing from the same unified namespace. All of those methodologies are in previous videos. So when we're, when we're selling IIoT and digital transformation, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is where did the client come from? Okay. Was it an inbound opportunity that they were recommended to us? Did they come from uh, what, our marketing efforts? Uh, did they find us on Google? How, you know, how did, they, how did they come to us? An outbound opportunity is primarily through cold calling. So we, um, we reached out to the client. This is uh, very rare. Um, we, we, do, um, we do have a sales staff and they, they and, the, our, my mandate to the sales staff is that they're supposed to be finding the right partners for us. So these types of, uh, it's, it's, it, these types of opportunities take much, much longer to cultivate. And anyone who's in sales and in business, they know that. It's much easier to keep somebody, a client. It's 10 times more expensive to get a new client than it is to keep the ones you already have, right? So if, they, if we reached out to them, these are generally what we refer to as cold uh, opportunities. A cold opportunity requires that we sell the value op proposition. So in this case, we're going to do value prop. And in this case, we no value prop. They're already warmed up. Okay, so that, th this is important to note. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you what it means once we've sold the value proposition. 
how do we go from A to Z? So once the, once, once the client is convinced, IIoT, digital transformation, and enterprise class is for me, this is how we're gonna do more with less, I'm gonna show you the A to Z part. A starts with after they're convinced of the value proposition. You have a whole playlist on the value proposition. That's right, selling IIoT to executives, et cetera. All right, step number one, so we're gonna do A. Step number one is evaluation. Okay, so the first thing that we do, the very first thing that we do is we evaluate the client, okay? So we call this the roadmap phase. So what will happen in most cases is we will have one or two uh, conference calls with the client. We may do an on-site visit. Uh, we essentially do the value proposition. We find out what their pain, their pain points are. Um, we, discuss, we figure out whether they're they are a prime candidate to digitally transform. They have in the, the internal resources, they have the wherewithal. Um, and then what we do is we say, what you need is a roadmap. That is, we, you need us to come in. Uh, what we can do is we can come in and we can, we'll spend one to three days on site going through a series of meetings, okay? That series of meetings is us doing data collection um, it, it, we're evaluating the entire organization top to bottom. Part of that is the, we've, we've determined whether they're a values-based organization prior to the roadmap. The roadmap is something the client pays us to do. So essentially what they do is they hire us to build them a roadmap to, for success. So they're bringing us in to evaluate them from top to bottom and, and literally draw out a roadmap how to get from where they are to where they want to go. Once, we, once we've determined that they share the five core values that we have, that they understand the value of IoT digital transformation and, um, uh, and enterprise class systems, and they have the desire to move forward, the first step, the A, is evaluation. That is deep, a deep dive with the organization. So we go, generally go on site one to three days. It really depends on the number of sites we have to visit and the number of meetings. But he, during the roadmap phase, the A, the, the A step is we are evaluating executive vision, okay? Evaluate the executive vision. We're evaluating the current state. We're evaluating the infrastructure, okay? We're evaluating the immediate need these are the pain points they're aware of. So when you bring me on site, you're bringing me in as a consultant, you, you know you have a problem. The first thing I find out is what problem do you think you have? And you're almost always right, it's a problem. But our job as the experts is to identify the problems you're not aware of yet, okay? So immediate needs, this is future needs. These are the pain points you're not aware of. Risks, barriers, and human capital. The human capital component is we know what it takes to digitally transform a large organization. And some of that requires that you have expertise internally. We always require that our, our clients work with us through the process of digitally transforming their organization. There has, to be, there has to be internal ownership of the solution. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're basically gonna prop them up and we're gonna phase ourselves out over time and the internal human capital is gonna take over, okay? Uh, the barriers to success. Um, this is going to be uh, cavemen, citizens against virtually everything, infrastructure issues. It's gonna be, it's gonna be all the reasons, it's, it, it, it could be the, um, it's gonna be all the reasons we might fail, that they might fail in the venture. The risks are gonna be, um, have to do with maybe, um, uh, we know we're going to have to deploy an agile mindset, but they're, they're still stuck in a, in a waterfall frame of mind. Um, maybe it's their CapEx process. Maybe the fact that once they make a decision to move, it could take them 18 months to get the capital to do it. That's a risk to success. Why? Two reasons. Number one, technology changes. Two, human capital changes over an 18-month period. So that's a risk for us. So once we do the roadmap, we're generally spend one to three days on site, then we leave and we're gone for about three weeks. And during that three week process, we are literally creating a document that is 
how to digitally transform your business, okay? This is what that document looks like. All right, so here, here's the deal. When we draw the roadmap, the first thing we do is we say uh, where they are now is here. This is the five-year wannabe, okay? So this is the executive vision. This is where they are today, and this is where they want to be in five years, okay? What our roadmap does is our roadmap says, we, what we do is we draw a vector, and that vector is, we're, you know, anyone who's an engineer, this is your vector. What we're trying to do is draw a vector that runs us parallel along their vision, which is this is their growth, right? So this is the evolution of their digital transformation story, okay? We're drawing an error vector that gets us parallel to their path, okay? This is what we refer to the error vector is if we're a little high, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not going to run parallel to the, the solution, so we may have to correct at some point. If we're a little low, we may have to correct. The reason that uh, we spend so much time fixing solutions that other people started is because they don't, the other people, the, whether it's the internal customer, whether it's the other integrator or the other consultancy firm, they don't draw the correct vector to begin with. The, the, so what we do is we break this into phases. The roadmap contains all this. So sometimes, most of the time it's a 25 to 60 page document. It employs the, the methodology that we, we took and, and it includes uh, where they are today, where they want to get to, and it lists out all these things. And then we break it into phases. Here's the roadmap to success. So P1 is phase one. P2 is phase two. P3 is phase three. P4 is phase four. P1 is always Intellic or our partners doing all the work, 100% of the work. So this is implementing our architecture, our enterprise methodology, our project mes um, management methodology, infrastructure, our scrum team, et cetera. This generally takes, um, we try to make this as inexpensive as humanly possible. Phase two is our first pilot. So this is Arch, phase two is a pilot. So what it means is we are going to pilot the digital transformation strategy that we recommended. Whether, whether they brought us in to build them an enterprise class SCADA system, or whether they brought us in to build them an enterprise class MES system, or they brought us in to do machine learning, we don't go in and just do the project they brought us in to, to do. What we do is we approach that project as one part of a much bigger whole. And the future of uh, systems integration is consultancy firms who are doing that. Okay, the future is not building panels and writing PLC code. OEMs are gonna start writing all that, okay? Um, the integration is gonna be, is gonna evaporate. Right now, integration firms exist because we're connecting disparate systems together. It's a vast majority of what we do. We're connecting. While IIoT means the connections are native, right? I install and point, okay? So phase two is the pilot where essentially we generally pick one line, one machine, one area in your business, and we, do, we take the list of requirements and we develop those lists of requirements. This is 100% us. This is 90% us doing it, okay? So now we've had a successful pilot. At the end of phase two, we have a successful pilot. Now we go to phase three, which is rollout. Now, it's actually two things. It's learn, we apply the lessons we learned, and we roll out. Okay? In phase three, it is generally 60% us. Okay? So this is more, this is more stuff. This is more features. This could be things like, hey, man, we've got this paper traveler that goes from process A all the way down to process F. By the time it gets to process F, it's covered in grease. Half the times it's lost. We want to digitize that. We want that traveler to be an electronic traveler that travels through the process, through our, our workflow. We may build that feature in phase three. Okay, so phase, but what's happening is 10% of this is the customer. It's the customer's own internal developers who are working with us. 40% of this 
is the customer's own internal developers who are working with us as a team. By the time we get to phase four, we have no idea what we're doing in phase four. Okay, we may have a general idea, but when you take an agile approach, generally nothing you said you were gonna do in phase four is what you actually do. What happens is we learn things in phase one, they learn things. Once they get their hands on the system in, in phase two, when they get the hand on the system in phase three, and they come up with a whole list of ideas that get thrown into the backlog, that get thrown into the backlog that you end up doing in phase four, okay? Phase four is generally 30% us and 70% them. And by the time we get to P5, it is generally 10% us and 90% the customer. And now we're in a consultancy role supporting them. And by the time we get to phase five, we're moving on to the next major implementation, okay? That's generally what's happening. We're actually, we're doing that in phase four. So if you look at the arc of our business, it, they, all of the engagements have followed this, this path. Eventually what happens is, is we've trained the client. And this isn't just individual plants. We're talking scores, of, you know, we're talking 150 plants globally, 80 plants globally. We're talking, you know, six, you know five, 10, 15, 20 business units. We're, we're working at the, at the corporate level. And if you wanna see the approach that we take, we take that approach, um, the approach that we've shown you in the videos in December, January, and February in, those, in our, uh, our IIoT series. So this is how we sell IIoT A to Z. I mean, we take the approach, we evaluate, we roadmap. That roadmap essentially lays out what we're gonna do over the course of, these engagements are never five years, by the way, for us. We're generally gone around here so generally, we're looking at a three-year engagement with that client. Um, and, and the way, if you look at the capital that they spend, they spend a lot of capital here. They spend very little capital here. They spend a lot of capital here. Um, and then very little. You know, it could be one or two dollar signs, one or two dollar signs at that point. So when you look at where the investments are, there's a big investment in phase one because you're putting all the infrastructure in. You're, you know, part of the recommendations we make during the roadmap is who do they have to hire? Who are they missing? You don't have a director of technology. You don't have a Python subject matter expert. Or in some cases, we're telling them they have the wrong people. Sometimes we're having to say in the roadmap, uh, your current director of information technology is someone who will be a barrier to your success you're gonna to need to reappropriate them somewhere else or bring in someone else who's not going to be a barrier to success. So this is the, this is the digital transformation A to Z. If A is here and Z is here, so what is Z? The Z is going to be machine learning and other. When we get to the other end, when we get to the other end of this engagement, we are now what we are doing is we're developing truly cost-saving um, solutions in the machine learning space.